Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. I want to talk to you today about contentment. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Contentment is spiritual rest, and contentment is quietness. And it comes as we strive toward godliness and holiness. For in godliness and holiness we become aware of what is important and what is eternal. We just read that godliness with contentment is great gain. I think it is difficult to separate contentment and godliness. They are so intertwined and they overlap. A lack of contentment stems from what I call the more syndrome. The more we have sometimes, the more we want. And also a lack of contentment can stem from a, a lack of commitment. When we are truly committed to Christ and His cause and example, we accomplish things, and with that accomplishment comes also a sense of contentment, a sense of well-being, a sense of accomplishment, for we are doing what we know we should be doing. Contentment, beloved, doesn't depend on material wealth or things. The great Apostle Paul is such a wonderful example of contentment. And he gives us the blueprint for this uh, beautiful spirit of contentment. He says, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. So Paul tells us that contentment is something to be learned. It doesn't always come naturally. I know it doesn't for me. Sometimes I get restless and I just, I think, God, why am, why am I not content? And this is the time that you have to go to the word in prayer and you have to go to Jesus and you have to ask him what's causing the restlessness or the discontentment. And just like Paul says that we have to learn to be content. It doesn't always come just as easy as we want it to. One of the most devastating things to our spirit and causes of discontentment and restlessness is a murmuring and complaining spirit. Murmuring and complaining gets into our spirit and it causes discontentment. Philippians 2.14 tells us that we are to do everything without complaining and arguing. And then Proverbs 15.16 says, Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Having things in the right situations don't always ensure contentment. Contentment is a learned state. It is a commitment to the Lord Jesus in accepting our present situation and circumstances, knowing that he is enough and that he can can supply and he can always, beloved, make up the lack. One of the best stories that I have ever read on con- on contentment is regarding a woman named Ella. Ella worked as a missionary with the Pygmies in Africa for 52 years. She left her country and her family and all that was familiar. Primitive didn't even begin to describe her living conditions um, with the heat and the humidity of the African bush. Um, But Ella found no relief because electricity and air conditioning and other modern conveniences were only a dream. They were not available where she was a missionary. Some days it was so hot that she had to bring in the thermometer inside because it couldn't register past 120 degrees without breaking. Ella's daughter wondered how her mom had managed to live a life of contentment when her circumstances would have caused the hardiest to complain. 
but in an old diary of her mother's, Ella's daughter discovered her mother's prescription for contentment. And I want to share this with you today, beloved. Number one, never allow yourself to complain about anything, not even the weather. Now, for some of us <laughs> living in southwest Missouri, that is a little bit hard to do. But Ella never allowed herself to complain, her daughter said about the weather. And number two, she never pictured herself in any other situation or, or circumstance or someplace else. In other words, she accepted where she was. She accepted where God put her. And number three, never compare your lot with another's. Don't look at somebody else and wish that, you know, that you had what they had or you were where they were. Number four, never allow yourself to wish this or that had been otherwise. In other words, don't live with regret and don't go back in time and in the past and, and waste precious time of the moment. Number five, never dwell on tomorrow. Remember that tomorrow is God's and not ours. Ella's eyes were fixed on eternity and not on herself. Her tomorrows belong to God, just as our tomorrows belong to God, beloved. She had given them to him, and because all of Ella's tomorrows were nestled in God's loving arms, she was free to live today. One day at a time, she could make the right choices and grow to possess the holy habit of contentment. If we want to be examples of contentment, let us not dwell on the past and not, not let us look too forward into the future to worry about what maybe is going to happen. But let us live for today and let us say with the Apostle Paul that I have learned to be content and the very probably the the best thing that I have learned when I moved from the west coast back here several years ago and left my family and 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 the beautiful ocean and the things that I really loved in Oregon I have learned that we must accept where God places us we must accept who we are in him and we have to learn to give thanks in all things. The Bible says that this is pleasing unto God when we give thanks to Him in all things. We may not have to give thanks for the things that displease us or cause us discontentment, but God wants us, beloved, to give thanks in all things, for this truly does please our dear Lord and Savior. May you today find the contentment. May you learn to be content where you are. Place it in the loving hands of God and let Him teach you how to be content in your present circumstances. He can do it. He has the power and He loves you enough to want you to rest in contentment. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments, or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.